Hey guys, welcome back to Ed's Garage. Today we are going to do a video of how to install the Rocky Road rock sliders for the uh, 2020. This happens to be a 2007 Hummer H3. Of course, this will be the same on any Hummer H3 and even pretty much the same on the Hummer H3T. The reason I'm doing this video is because there really isn't a lot of content out there on YouTube on how to do this or how to do it properly. Um, the only other video I could find was kind of dark and um, yeah, didn't really offer a whole lot of information. So figured I'd do this video to help anybody else out that's interested in them. Now, uh, first thing I wanna mention, so I got these from Rocky Road Outfitters and they took 11 weeks to get. So that's one thing I'm a little annoyed about was how long it took to get them, but the quality has certainly made up for the time it took. So these are a quarter inch thick steel uh, everywhere by the looks of it and they are super super beefy and they're bolt on they're not weld on so uh, there are six bolt holes and uh, it looks pretty easy to install all right so a quick preparation before we go ahead and install these um, the the cool thing is that the frame on the h3 already has some threaded holes ready to go uh, for these uh, M10 bolts. These are an 8.8 .8 hardness and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the bolt holes first using some WD-40 and then I'm actually going to chase that with a uh, tap set here. So the reason I want to tap these holes is because they're really old, they're full of dirt and they're probably got some rust in them as well. Uh, so I'm going to use the, uh, the tap first. So this is an M10 1.5 uh, thread pitch. Just going to go ahead and clean out those holes. All right, so finally got the, uh, the tap through there. I actually had to go down to an M9 um, 1.25, which is not even the right thread pitch. I got it started with this, and then I chased it with the M10 1.5. Um, now, this didn't really do anything except for takes out some rust. So I could not even get the M10 in there. So it's going to take a little bit of work to clean out all of these holes. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll get back to the video. All right, so I have finished cleaning out all of the holes. Now I'm gonna show you where the holes are real quick. So starting with near the back wheel, uh, there's two holes right above the e-brake cable here. Now we probably have to pull this off, but I'm gonna see if there's any way to do it without pulling it off. I don't think there is, because I think the uh, plate has to get in there and underneath there. But uh, the other one, the other holes, are right here, just after where the e-brake splits. And this is kind of a downside because this is gonna sit on the bar for the, um, for the slider. So e-brake cable is gonna be constantly rubbing on one spot. So we're either gonna wear through the e-brake cable or we're gonna wear through the uh, coating on the rock sliders. And then the last set are again, with the e-brake cable on the driver's side anyway, um, right on the either side of uh, where the cable comes in from, or down from the cab and joins onto this section here. So, so that's where they all are. Now, you'll also notice I've cleaned up each spot because the last thing you want is a little grain of sand or something like that uh, getting <coughs> caught between, between it. But yeah, quite a bit of rust came out of the little holes you can see here. It's pretty nasty. Um, so I only went in a little bit with the M9. You can see here only about um, three eighths of an inch and then followed it up, went all the way through with the M10. All right, so now that that's all cleaned up, we're gonna put some jack stands here. We'll rest the um, rock slider on the jack stands uh, and then slowly bump the jack stands up until it's pretty much in the right spot so I can at least start some of the bolts.
Okay, so as you can see, it looks like I should be able to do this without removing this cable. So we're gonna leave that, and I'm just gonna slowly bump the jack stands up on either side to get it to the right height. Okay, there it is. Oops. Okay, so we got a bit of a bit of an issue here, and that is that one bar on the rear doesn't seem to want to go back far enough. They've they've made the holes really really wide. Uh, but apparently not wide enough because, as you can see, this bracket in the front is pretty much right up against this thing here. It doesn't seem like it's going to want to go any further. Um, I mean, I'll try, but I don't, I can't see it moving any further. But then the bolts don't quite line up. I don't know if you can see, oh, you can't see that from this angle. Uh, they're a little bit further that way. So this whole bracket needs to go that direction. And it's not cooperating. So maybe what I'll do is put in one of these front bolts first, just so that I don't have this thing come crashing down on my head as I'm adjusting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosely thread this in here. And it still needs uh, a washer and a lock washer and maybe some thread sealant, but I'm not going to worry about thread sealant because honestly, if it starts to come loose, I think it's going to be quite obvious that it's coming loose. There we go. Well, that will hold that temporarily while I mess with it. <sighs> Give this a kick from here. <clears throat> now, there's no way. <sighs> That's annoying. So I'm going to, I'm going to strap that back one and see if I can tug it over with a strap. <sighs> In light of these troubles, I'm now starting to waver a little bit on my recommendation of these rock sliders because I am yanking on that bar there like crazy. Yeah, as you can see here. And that hole, I don't know if you can see that, but it's right, right here. Yeah, shoot, can't quite get a good angle on it with the camera. So, here we go. As you can see, that hole is not quite lined up. This needs to go that way more still. I managed to get this one in, and it's it's going in properly. This one I almost had in, but it started to cross thread. I could feel it um, because it's just too far. Oh man! So this bar appears to not be on a right angle or something. I don't know because this side. Right there, that's as far as it'll go. You can see it's up against this piece right here. So I'm gonna just keep working it and hopefully it'll go. There we go. It's in, yay. <laughs> this thing is very, very tight. I would not want that to accidentally snap. All right, I haven't quite tightened that. Uh, I mean, it's tight, but it's just tight enough to kind of hold everything in place. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that uh, strap now because it doesn't need to be there anymore. Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> Whoa. Okay. All right, we're now onto the middle bar here. 
<laughs> and it looks like I had the same freaking problem. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh man. This one too? Jeez. <sighs> All right, I'll do this one first. These ones somewhat tightened up. We got screwed up the washer, so I'm gonna have to pull this one out again. Um, as soon as I tightened it, it kind of flexed out, straightened out, so something was bent. I don't know exactly what it was. <sighs> now, if you're wondering why there's such a large gap in here, that's because I've actually got a inch and a quarter uh, body lift. So ordinarily, this would be down a little bit, little bit lower, but this is actually kind of nice because now you know, I got my foot kind of in there, the front end of the foot. Um, so lots of lots of clearance there to step on uh, if I ever need to get up onto the roof or something. But anyway, next problem I have is these two holes, just like the back pole, uh, just like the back one did not line up. So I'm guessing it's probably this one that was out then because the second and third one were out by the same amount. So I'm just going to have to bend these. Uh, with the strap just enough as you can see it's just not quite there it looks like it would fit looks like it would work uh and i honestly i could probably make this bottom one work but the top one is definitely off more so that's not going to work These socket wrenches. Thing. Stupid Mastercraft. <sighs> All right, got this side bolted on. Let me show you a couple of flaws that I found though. They're kind of annoying. Um, I'd still recommend the, these rock sliders because honestly, there's not a lot of companies making these for H3s. And uh, these are a, a quarter inch metal, as I mentioned earlier. So the flaws that I'm seeing, unfortunately, for one, they didn't really design this very well. What I mean by that is this right here, the lower control arm support, it sticks out a bit from the frame. And you can see that the edge of this needs to go over that lip. Well, that explains why the whole thing is kind of twisted because this has nowhere to go. So this is, you know, it's up here, it's further in than this side. So that's a little annoying. Um, they have this cutout here, seemingly for no reason, um, which is interesting. I don't know what the thought process was there. I guess they just decided to use that in case somebody wanted to run the e-brake line over top, I guess. So if this was loose, you could put it up here. I suppose that's an option, but I mean, then you can't really use this bracket anymore. It just doesn't line up. But uh, yeah, minor, minor annoyance. Um, over here, as I mentioned before, the brake line sits on this bar. Now, ultimately there's really no way around that because they kind of had to put a support here and a support here. What they could have done, presumably, is put this support 
in this position right here. There's lots of space here. Um, there's a hole underneath this, uh, this label and another hole right there. So there is two threaded holes. So that technically could have put the bracket there. I assume they kept it here because there's more weight in the front of the vehicle. Um, so maybe that's the reasoning behind that. So what I will probably do is just put some, some sort of protection uh, either around this bar or around that line. Or I just won't worry about it. Anyway, that is the driver's side done. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. So as I was mentioning before, I can now use this to get up on top of the truck. Um, I thought I'd be able to stick my foot in there, but I really can't. So it's mainly, mainly just gonna be this bar that I can stand on to climb up the truck. <sighs> okay, now for the passenger side. Um, now, there is a couple things to note about these um, rock crawling or rock sliders that are kind of nice, some, some nice things about it. Um, and that is both the front and rear are tapered off like this so that if you do get a rock kind of in this position here, it kind of slides up onto it. And then in the back, if it comes off of the rock, hopefully the idea is that it, you know, you're already getting up there with your tire, your rear tire. So that's kind of cool. The other nice thing is this bar that sticks out um, isn't really necessary for anything. It's, uh, I mean, it, obviously if you got a, a rock right beside you, you know, you're not gonna damage the side of the truck. So it kind of sticks out a little bit. So it protects the, um, not just the rocker panels underneath, but the doors as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then it's a nice place to stand as well. I might put some grip tape on there or something like that later on. Um, finally, the last thing I do like about it is the fact that the supports are all uh, quarter inch steel. Everything is very, very strong. So this isn't going anywhere. You can use this to jack up the truck now. Uh, you can fall on this. Like if you come off a big rock or something and land on it, it's not going anywhere. It's very, very strong. So I think it looks good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw in, throw on the passenger side now. All right, this side should be a little easier. Uh, I don't believe there's anything in the way on this side like there is on that side. So let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, lots of space there. All right, I gotta clean out those holes and get at her. Passenger side rock slider is on. So again, with the weird cutout right here, uh, that's not gonna be used for anything. And it's on the back one as well. So just seems like a bit of waste of a potential area of strength. And I'm still not super satisfied with, with this. We uh, should have included like a I don't know, some washers or maybe a metal plate or something to stick it out as far as this bit here. Oh well. All right, all done. Installed on both sides. I gotta say, despite all my complaints, I am pretty happy with the build quality. Um, <laughs> definitely don't have to worry about those going anywhere. Uh, I think I'm ready for Moab. <laughs> yeah, one day. Um, but anyway, I'm going to sign off there and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And um, yeah, don't take my word for it. Uh, check out this company. They're, aside from the amount of time it took to get them and the weird little 
inconsistencies with the build and that one bar being bent. Um, and I also had to lift on the passenger side, I had to lift that one up. I think that's pretty normal though for rock sliders. Uh, I think it's impossible to get those perfect every time. So, you know, adjusting them as you're putting them on is not, not completely unusual. Um, but yeah, that spot where the, the weld stuck out, uh, or rather the, the plate stuck out for the, the rear control arm, um, that's a little annoying. And uh, the way that the uh, e-brake cable routes around it, again, I don't think there's any way they could have got around that. But other than that, uh, all the welds are perfect and it looks really good. So I'm still happy. All right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, watching. Have a great day. Take care.